Good morning, everybody. And good morning to those watching online as well. Uh, I'd like to take your service booklets. We will begin at the first page with the prayer of preparation. Which we say together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. A few moments of quiet before we say the confession together, just to bring to mind perhaps some of those things we might be particularly wanting to confess this morning. And we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Collect. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind, and reaching out to that which is before, we may run the way of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Chapter 11, beginning at verse 47. Woe to you, for you build the tombs of the prophets whom your ancestors killed. So you are witnesses and the proof of the deeds of your ancestors, for they killed them, and you build their tombs. Therefore also the wisdom of God said, I will send them prophets and apostles, some of whom they will kill and persecute so that this generation may be charged with the blood of all the prophets shed since the foundation of the world, from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who perished between the altar and the sanctuary. Yes, I tell you, it will be charged against this generation. Woe to you lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You did not enter yourselves, and you hindered those who were entering. When he went outside, the scribes and the Pharisees began to be very hostile towards him and to cross-examine him about many things, lying in wait for him, to catch him in something he might say. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, I don't know how many of you are into uh, saints' days. If you are, you will know who is saint we remember, which saint we remember today. I won't ask you to shout it out, in case you don't know. 
It's, she's not a particularly well-known saint, but an everyday name. It's saint, today is the feast day of Saint Teresa of Avila. And uh, she lived uh, in the 16th century, from about 1511 to 1582. In Spain, Avila is a city in Spain, uh, just to the north of Madrid, I think. Uh, she was a very, very typical young girl, typical teenager. She was a very rebellious teenager, actually. And uh, her father, in order to try and calm her down, sent her to a Carmelite nunnery so that she would be, you know, taught the proper way. And when she was there, she had a, an experience of God and she had a number of very significant, quite dramatic experiences of God throughout her life. And she wrote quite extensively about them. But what I'd like to mention to you this morning is something much more simple than that about her. When she died in 1582, uh, when people were looking through her very small number of possessions, they found her Bible and her prayer book. And in one of them, I'm not sure which, they found a bookmark which had the following prayer written on it. And it's become quite a well-known prayer, you might have heard it. Let me read it to you. I think it's actually very appropriate for the times that we're living in at the moment and what we're facing here uh, in this country, potentially over the next few months with this ongoing uh, pandemic crisis. The words of these, let nothing disturb you, let nothing frighten you, all things are passing, God never changes, patience obtains all things, whoever has God lacks nothing, God alone suffices. Let me read that again. Let nothing disturb you, let nothing frighten you, all things are passing, God never changes, patience obtains all things. Whoever has God lacks nothing. God alone suffices. Quite some prayer. And it's a lot more than just asking God to help us be positive or to look on the bright side, things are going to get better. There's much more substance to it than that. It does seem, doesn't it, as though this crisis is going to go on for a little while longer yet. And uh, of course, it will eventually pass. But until that happens, you know, we can get on with life as much as we can. Aircrafts will take off every day. We can get on, as, we get on with life as much as we can, and we can live in the present day, not continually looking forward impatiently to when this is all going to be over, which is a great temptation for many of us to do. Thinking, well, when this is over, I can do that. When this is over, we'll be able to do that, this, that, and the other. And that's an understandable view to have. But this prayer encourages us, or ask God to help us to live patiently in the present until the crisis passes. We can still make the most of all the gifts and the opportunities God gives us. And from listening to what's going on in people's lives at the moment, I think there are lots of opportunities for the church and the Christians to uh, present the love of Jesus Christ to people at this time. Life may be very different, the church may be very different, but God is still God and he's still sufficient for our needs. That's the essence of this prayer. He provides us with the assurance that whatever happens, good or bad, we are in his hands. Let me read it one last time. Let nothing disturb you. Let nothing frighten you. All things are passing. God never changes. Patience obtains all things. Whoever has God lacks nothing. God alone suffices. It's a great thing that someone took the trouble to look through her possessions and find that prayer, that bookmark in her Bible because that prayer has been a great source of comfort, I think, for many, many people ever since she first wrote it. So let's have a moment of quiet now just to consider those thoughts. Maybe ask God to help us be patient and to live each day one at a time, making the most of the present and believing that in God we have all that we need.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we come to our intercession, so let us pray. Lord God, we see uh, in our own country this morning many people feeling anxious and fearful, worried about many things, but in particular the increasing rates of infection in parts, particularly in Northern England. We pray for those areas this morning, for Liverpool and Manchester, Leeds, Sheffield, Nottingham, parts of South Wales, Northern Ireland, where in Scotland, where things are progressively becoming a bit more difficult. Pray for all those who live in those places. Pray for the NHS in all its different forms, hospitals, GP surgeries, clinics, for all who work there, for all who may be worried in anticipating what may come next, and for all key workers as they continue about their important tasks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pray as well for those who are concerned about their jobs and livelihoods that may be threatened, and for those who have recently become unemployed. Pray for the government as they continue to wrestle with how best to deal with these problems. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that all of us will be uh, sensitive and careful in what we do and be concerned for the needs of others rather than for our own, our own needs. Help us to be mindful of those who may be in need in our own area, in our own parish and community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who may be in any kind of need around the world. Those areas suffering from the effects of natural disaster, from the effects of famine or lack of clean water, lack of proper housing, and for all those organisations who are trying to help. Pray for the United States of America as they continue to uh, prepare for the forthcoming election. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our own parish here at St Lawrence and our own community, for the roads in which we live, the people who are our neighbours, our work colleagues, for those who live and work in this area. Help us as a fellowship to be people who proclaim the love of Jesus Christ and point people to faith in him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, a chance for, to, for us to bring our own personal requests to God. Sometimes we feel that in comparison to the world's needs, our own needs are insignificant. But thank you, Lord, that you are a God who is concerned for the everyday needs of all people. And in the quiet now, we bring our own requests to you. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hear the words of comfort our Saviour Christ says to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God. 
Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in your tender mercy gave your only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself, once offered, a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray, and grant that we, receiving these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. Let us pray now as our Saviour Jesus Christ has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. <coughs> Amen. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving.
We say together the prayer after communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. I will uh, put the prayer of St. Teresa of Avila I mentioned in the short homily on the church Facebook page so you can look at it at your leisure. Now the final blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>